Welcome to this segment of your Interpartum Lesson 4, Nursing Care of the Family During Labor and Birth. In this segment, we will discuss true versus false labor and EMTALA. These are your objectives for Lesson 4. Please review these objectives. The patient calls. They think they're in labor. How does a nurse help the patient distinguish the difference in true and false labor? There are definite characteristics of true labor. The first characteristic is, is that contractions are regular, stronger, last longer, and become closer together. As you see in this slide, the contractions are strong if this were an injury uterine pressure catheter. They are close together and they are lasting longer. They are lasting greater than one minute. Contractions become more intense with walking instead of relaxing. Usually pain in true labor radiates from the lower back to the lower abdomen. Pains also continue despite comfort measures. There are progressive cervical changes in true labor. This, upon VAG exam, the nurse will notice that the cervix is softening and effacement begins. The dilation also is progressive. Dilation from not effaced or dilated to fully effaced and dilated and to fully effaced and fully dilated. You start to begin to see changes in the cervix. You will also see bloody show. The cervix will also move from a posterior position to an increasingly anterior position during true labor. The fetal presenting part usually becomes engaged in the pelvis, which results in a phenomenon called lightning as it becomes easier for the mother to breathe. At the same time, the fetal head presses on the maternal bladder, result resulting in an increasing in urinary frequency. False labor. There are characteristics of false labor. With false labor, you see irregular or temporarily regular uterine contractions. The uterine contractions generally stop when walking or changing position. They're felt usually in the back or in the abdomen above the navel. They're often stopped by comfort measures. In false labor, the cervix may be soft, but there are no changes in either effacement or dilation. And the changes will often also occur without bloody show. The, the cervix is also in a post, posterior position. The fetal part, presenting part is usually not engaged in the pelvis. Let's review. In true labor, regular contractions become stronger, last longer, and occur closer together. In false labor, the contractions are irregular or temporarily regular. In true labor, contractions increase or become more intense with ambulation. In false labor, contractions stop when ambulating or changing positions. In true labor, the contractions usually radiate from lower back to the lower abdomen. In false labor, they are felt in the back or in the abdomen above the navel. In true labor, the contractions continue despite comfort measures. In false labor, contractions are often stopped by comfort measures. In true labor, there are progressive cervical changes, including softening, dilation, effacement, and there's presence of bloody show. In false labor, the cervix may be soft, but there are no progressive changes nor bloody show. In true labor, the cervix moves from posterior to an increasingly anterior position. In false labor, the cervix is generally in the posterior position. In true labor, the fetal presenting part becomes engaged, accompanied by lightning and increased urinary frequency. In false labor, the fetal presenting part is usually not engaged. EMTALA It is very important that the nurses understand EMTALA. EMTALA is the Emergency Medical Treatment and Active Labor Act. 
This is a federal regulation that ensures that women in labor get proper treatment. According to this act, true labor is an emergency condition and patients deserve treatment wherever or whenever treatment is sought. Nurses who are working in labor and birth units need to be aware of EMTALA and their responsibility in ensuring compliance. Any woman presenting in labor and birth unit is considered in true labor until it is deemed otherwise by a qualified health care professional. Each agency has a specific policies and procedures in place to address and ensure compliance with EMTALA regulations. It is the responsibility of nurses working in the labor and birth units to know and apply the policies of their institution and EMTALA regulations.